Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So we just released our brand new tutorial on working with 3D objects in Apple Motion and in Final Cut Pro 10. In it, we teach you how to use Motion's library of 3D objects, how to rig them and publish them to Final Cut Pro, how to find and import third-party 3D objects, how to modify them in free applications, how to create environments for 3D objects and animate cameras through the environment, how to use 3D objects in replicators and particle emitters, how to track 3D objects to video with a very cool plugin, and much more. Today on MapRake Studio, we're sharing an excerpt from this tutorial where I teach you how to build an asteroid field and fly through it. So let's jump in. Replicators in motion are already amazing, but when you add in 3D objects, the possibilities are really endless. So here's an example. I have our Earth and Moon that we had before. Let me turn off the camera animation so we can just see we have the Earth and Moon with this little animation we created earlier. And I've added a little camera dolly that pushes into it. And I'll turn that off. I've added a star field, which is simply a blur object from Motion's library replicated in the background. So we have a little star field and that's in a 2D group. So it doesn't move with everything else since they're supposed to be far away. Now, what I'm gonna do is go to the library 3D objects, and in nature, I'll add the rock into this group. By default, it'll be in the center of the 3D world. So if I go to the top view, we can see that rock is right where the Earth is. And we can also see the camera here. I want to move this rock much closer to the camera. Control A, back to the active camera view. Okay, that's pretty close. I'll move it back a little bit. And I'm not worried about the size yet, because what we're going to do is replicate this. So I'll hit the Replicate button, go straight to the inspector, and immediately reduce the size quite a bit, make these quite small. And then for the shape, I want a box. So this is going to be a 3D shape. When you choose box, it automatically checks the 3D checkbox. And for this box size, I want to make it wider, like a, an asteroid field, and maybe not so high. And I want it to go pretty deep because we need to fly through it. Now, of course, we don't want a tile fill, so I'll set that to random fill and then increase the number of points for our little asteroid belt that we need to fly through. They all look very similar, so let's go down to scale randomness and crank up the scale randomness so they're different sizes. Let's open up angle randomness and increase X and Y and Z so that we have randomness on all three axes. Now that's great, but they don't move and I wanna make them move. You could animate these angle parameters, either ra angle randomness, angle end, angle, uh, and any of that would make them move, but they're all gonna to move together and move at exactly the same speed in the same direction at the same time. Instead, I'm gonna use a sequence replicator behavior to animate them. So we're gonna add rotation. I'm gonna open this up because we're gonna rotate on all axes and I'll just crank these numbers up. And this is gonna sequence through each of these objects, so not all at the same time. I'll increase the spread a little bit, otherwise each object will animate independently. And I can increase the loops if I wanted to animate faster. When I play through that, we can see how those animate. Now I'm gonna reduce those loops down and I will add some overall animation to these. So for angle end, I can add a rate parameter behavior, our old buddy rate, and crank that amount up. And what angle end does, it affects the first object very little bit and the last object fully. In other words, the first object, if you just had a row of objects, the first one wouldn't turn at all and the last one would turn in this case, 72 degrees on the x-axis. Now, if I go back and select the replicator, you might wonder, well, what's the order? Well, the order right now is from the center out, but I'm gonna choose shuffle order, so it's randomly picking different ones to move. So if I turn off the sequence replicator, just so we can see that angle end in action, we can see each rock now is moving a little bit differently as it moves through and animates each of those in kind of a random way. So it increases the randomness. If I turn the sequence replicator back on, the combination of those 
can make some more interesting rotation where they each are acting differently. So I'm going to turn that off. I've actually taken that a little bit further with this example here. I've pretty much done the same thing uh, by animating it just the way I discussed. And I'll turn the dolly behavior on that moves this camera forward. And I will need to render this. This is a lot of 3D objects that are being lit and need to be handled. So I'll render it and then show you what it looks like. And here's what my RAM preview looks like. By the way, that's available under the Mark menu. So the replicator is really great. You could take this further by adding multiple different types of rocks to the replicator. So you don't have the same single rock being replicated and trying to get variation by its size and position and rotation. And that way you'd have a lot more variation in the look of the asteroid belt. What do you think of the new 3D object capabilities in Motion and Final Cut Pro 10? Leave us a comment below. We're very interested in your opinion. If you like this content, subscribe, click the bell to get notified, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.